Welcome to the next installment in my video lecture series in economics. And in this particular video lecture, I'm going to be taking a look at the substitution effect. In particular, we're going to take a look at how the structure of a government subsidy impacts the budget constraint for an individual. So this is from my public finance course, and it relates to the section regarding the framework for the analysis of public expenditures. So here we have a budget constraint for an individual before the food subsidy comes into place. And what we're looking at is the two goods uh, categories that we're looking at is groceries consumed and all other goods consumed. So this just maps out this particular budget constraint, maps out what is affordable for this person given their income level and given the prices of the two price categories, groceries and all other goods consumed. So the, it, the budget constraint just maps out what this person could afford to buy. Now let's say the government institutes a program where they pay a portion or a part or a percentage of an individual's food costs. The example of this is the old food stamp program that the government initiated, the United States government initiated whereby individuals could purchase food stamps that could only be used to purchase food, but at a discounted rate. For example, they could purchase $100 worth of food stamps for $70. All right, so let's take a look at how this type of subsidy program impacts the budget constraint. So if the individual spends all of their income on groceries, they can consume 30% more, right? The government is allowing them to purchase food stamps at a 70% at 70% of their face value, so they're getting a 30% subsidy. But if we take a look at the individual who, let's say, purchased all other goods and produce and consumed no groceries, that means they didn't buy any food stamps, which means they didn't get any subsidy. So point F remains unchanged. You don't get the subsidy unless you purchase the food stamps. And if you spent all your money on all other goods outside of groceries, you have no money left to, pur to purchase food stamps from the government. So point F stays the same. And the new budget constraint is the light blue one after the subsidy. So make sure you're understanding why that is constructed that way. All right, point F remains completely unchanged because the individual has spent all their money on other goods and nothing's on groceries. Therefore, they have no money left to purchase food stamps, which means they get no subsidy. And also realize that if they spend all their money, they're going to get, they're going to be able to afford even more groceries because they get that roughly 30% subsidy on their uh, food costs. So the thing to notice about this is this causes the slope of the, indifferent, of the budget constraint to change. We have a different slope with the new budget constraint after the food subsidy with, the, for example, a food stamp program than before. So this introduces a distortion because it changes the ratio of prices in doing this. All right, because the price ratio is different, the slope of the budget constraint is different. And that introduces a distortion because you're changing the relative prices of these commodities. So make sure you're comfortable with this and the video I had previously on the income effect. All right. So what we will end up seeing here is a substitution effect because now we're changing the ratio of prices that will introduce the substitution effect. All right. In the previous example that I gave you with my income effect video, the only impact that you're going to see is the income effect. There's no substitution effect because the price ratio did not change. So hopefully this is helpful for you because as I said in the previous video, we're going to be taking a look at the structure of programs, of these subsidy programs, the efficiency of them, and a key part of doing that analysis is understanding how the structure of the program impacts the budget constraint.